what's up everybody? It's your pro wrestling media host bringing you the most. It's your boy, it's me, it's Nikki T. And we're down here in Melbourne, Florida at Whiskey Business. We're just recording our first episode of Unlaced and Kayfabe presented by Back in Time Wrestling. I wanted to just introduce a new face to you guys. What up, Back in Time Wrestling fam? It's your boy CJ. I conducted my first interview today. It went great. An amazing heel out of Orlando, Florida. He's a monster. He's a beast. I promise you we have a lot more coming for you guys. Please stay tuned. We got the podcast coming, we got interviews coming, we got shirts coming, we got all kind of media coming. Y'all stay tuned. Thank you. Don't miss out, guys. Let's keep stay making tuned. wrestling great. Ladies again. and gentlemen, infidels of all ages, I am the man of the hour. I hold all the power. I tie above all men. I am just oh too sweet to be sour. I am the one, the only, the great Ali Muhammad. <laughs> as a professional wrestler. So why Florida for wrestling? Well, I looked up online to see which is the best place to get the wrestling experience. And I found out that Florida has uh, the most school, the most promotion, right. and of course, it's the best chance to get to uh, WWE NXT. So the shows of Florida of all places. Nice. So you're thinking NXT is not the ultimate goal, but one of your goals? One of my goals, yes. And this was before AEW made the announcement. So. Uh, I went to Florida because I thought it'd be the best chance to break into the best in the business. How and how cool is it that AEW came along too? Is it in the same state? Just right, what, a year after you came? Pretty much a year after I came and I thought it'd be amazing because like there's more than one option for right. me, you know? Because like, yes, there's New Japan and Impact, but at the end of the day, like, WWE is the uh, biggest game and I want to get the biggest game. It's the kingpin, right? Pretty much, pretty you much. You know, yeah. everybody's got this stigma against WWE, mm. but I'm like, at the end of the day, that's where everybody wants to be. Say, what you, say what you want to say, but even NXT is WWE. Yeah. So maybe you do like a more indie style, more hard-hitting style, yeah, you can go to NXT, perfect your craft. Not everybody's made for main roster, but still, you want to try to be an NXT superstar and be on the roster of WWE and getting six figures every year, right? right. That's the goal of the day, we all like money, right? I love, I love the wrestling business, you love the wrestling business, but guess what? Our bills gotta get paid, right? Pretty much, yeah. And that's why you came all the way from across the country to Florida to make some damn money. Yes, sir. I drove all the way to uh, Florida to, you know, pursue my dream. And uh, it's not just about money because when I was at home, I, I stayed with my parents. I didn't pay rent, and I had a comfortable job as a school bus driver, and I was yeah. making uh, more money than pretty much anybody else. And at at, at one point. I felt content because like it was a good job, it was a nice paying job, but then I found myself, if I'm content at 23, then am I going to stay here for the rest of my life? So I decided to go for broke and ditch the comfort level and came all the way here. I love hearing that, man. Um, what age did you become a fan of pro wrestling? Uh, basically, uh, ever since I gained conscious, you know, as a child, <laughs> you know? That may be hard to uh, explain, yeah, but uh, when my when I was like an infant, my uh, mother's on, like, my father would put on uh, wrestling and I, I forgot who was on because it was a long time ago, but I remember just staring at the TV and like my first, one of my first memories was uh, Stone Cold being in the ring with uh, Mike Tyson and I remember I hearing am. about Mike Tyson and I see Stone Cold being the baddest man in the universe yes. and Mike Tyson being the baddest man on the planet and these two look eye to eye, eye to eye. Then uh, Mike Tyson pushed him, and the whole brawl came in, and news articles started reporting, and that's when, like, I really, really fell in love with the business. That's when wrestling was real, man. Mm -hmm. I, I can think, I can picture it in my head, just like you said. And Mike Tyson, mm -hmm. and Stone Cold isn't scared. 
Stone Cold looks him dead in the eye. And you're like, is this real? Is Stone Cold really that badass? I ain't scared. You I'm not scared. Of a bitch. You're in my domain right now, right? You're in my domain, Mike Tyson. I don't care about your boxing. And how good did Mike Tyson pull that roll off? Right. Especially the count with Shawn Michaels at the end of that match. Like, that, I'm glad you said that because, to me, that's the apex of professional wrestling. Right. I love the 80s and 90s stuff, but does it get any better than Mike Tyson, the biggest, baddest man on the planet, hanging out with Stone Cold Steve Austin? Yeah. Come on, man. Yes, and unfortunately, like I don't think we we'll ever see anything Once like that again, again because like well, most uh, athletes are more businessmen than like actual like fighters or right. athletes, you know. And the same thing like with professional wrestlers, like everybody's more of a social media present than like an actual wrestler. And it seems like I'm like assaulting everybody, but that's the uh, fact. And the thing is, like it is necessary that we all become more businessmen than fighters. And true. even for me, like. I've basically been told by my uh, trainer that said like I need to be more of a character rather than a fighter. Like yes, he can teach me how to fight, but at the end of the day, he said my character is what's going to like bring me the big money, not my fighting skills. For sure. So speaking of your trainer, who is your trainer? Uh, I have a uh, new trainer. His name is uh, Kenny Lester, aka Gorilla Blanco. Those in the wrestling and in the MMA world, they would know him and they know his father. Both of them had been in the promoting business for like two, three generations. Wow. And like he know he he met me when I first started and like he sees potential in me. But uh but the first like year two, he sees my potential being wasted and like he sees an opportunity to open a uh, school with Simon Gudge or okay. an independent thing he's known as Simon Grimm and he said like Hey man, like I see potential in you, and I want to like get to working with you. That way, like I can make you the best chick out there. Like that's why I was. He reached out to me, and like he reached I, out to you. He reached out to me. Yeah, yeah. like I won't. I, I was good. Like I was friends with him before, but like we never like talked about wrestling before. Like we just, you know, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Right. How's the, you know, this and that. But then like. Uh, after a while, like he reached out to me, he goes like, "Hey man, what's up?" And then like we start talking about more about wrestling. We start talking about more about me and my character, and that's when like we got closer and closer. And now what's called he and Simon Gunch are uh, opening up a school. I'm going to that school now, and uh, that's and you know I'm trying to be better as a wrestler. What's the name of the school? Uh, I don't think they uh, confirm at the uh, name yet, but everybody's been calling it a uh, Simon Gotcha School. Of course, you know, he's so. the most visible person. There. Okay, so we'll get the information from you. We'll, uh, we'll let people know because you know, obviously, I know Simon Gotcha. We've all seen him on WWE. Mm. We've seen him do his thing. He's a beast. So, you know, if he's the person running the school, definitely going to be a, you know, have a reputation of being solid. I definitely can see that. Right. Um, so, obviously, your current gimmick, mm. pretty well known. Or like you said to me earlier, it's like an archetype. Yeah. It's like, so why did you take that gimmick and why do you think it will, it'll be successful? Well, the thing is, like, I knew like before I started the business that I don't need a uh, gimmick about all else. And uh, me having the Arabian heritage, I thought it would be yeah. easy. I will just be a, uh, well, what was cool. When I first started, I thought I would just be an Arab. But then like, as uh, time grew, up, grew by, they said, like, instead of being just an Arab, be an Arabian sheik. Because like people are more, man. people are what's called are easily recognized by the uh, sheik. Right. And then I start getting the uh, sheik uh, robe, the sheik uh, hat, and uh, on one of my profile pictures, I actually had a uh, Egyptian scimitar around my belt. So I have had that as my profile picture at the moment. Right. So it's cool. I'm you know getting more and more involved with the uh, sheik architect as well. Yeah, I feel like obviously we know, you know the Iron Sheik, you know the sheik. Plenty of different archetypes, like you said, and we know that the, the evil foreigner archetype and gimmicks always going to work in America, right? Mm. So, do you enjoy being a heel? I do, and uh, the, the thing is, like, being a heel is easy for me, especially down the south. But then, like, I have uh, people telling me that if I were to go north, let's say, for example, like New York or Michigan, I'll be perceived as a baby face yeah. because there are more. Arabs there, so uh, there's a what's called thing there. Like while I'm in the south, I have to be the best heel Clean out up. there. But as soon as I go north, I gotta be the uh, baby face. So at the moment, like I gotta like try to get a balance to be a good heel in the south and a, a good baby in the north. 
because they have all the they you know the, the history of the ethnic hero up north. Right. So you'll have you know because she's Detroit, you know obviously Bruno and Italians in New York. So you you know it's harder to be a heel when everybody the people in the building look like you, right? <laughs> how, how am I going to get back out? Everybody here is brown like me, right? right? So it's a little bit different. But in the South, obviously history is a little bit different. It's easier to play it off. You know, you're off the crowd. We know we know 80 percent of the crowd's going to be you know not looking brown like us, right? So it's a little bit easier to be a heel, right? Yeah. So do you think that it'll be an easy tr transition for you to babyface? Or are you going to be a little difficult? I think it might be uh, a little easy. Because, well, not, I'm not going to say it's easy because, like, is uh, how do I say this? It? Uh, it's more like it's more to, to it than just, you know, walk out right. there and receive it. You had to uh, act baby freeze and wrestle baby freeze. Here's the thing, like, in the South, uh, what's going As a heel, I got to do a uh, cheek move. I got to break the eyes, poke the eyes, yeah. and what's going to be uh, what's going on. Strike to cut through, stuff like that. Yeah. Exactly. And as a baby face, I have to be on the and uphold. And uh, what's going Not that I don't know how to do it. It's just that at the moment, I'm being trained boring, more and more. It? It's not just born by <laughs> World's Call, because uh, World's Call, I mentioned this to uh, some of my uh, rest, uh, friends, yeah. I'm sorry, my friends, you know, like, I have a friend who wants to be a uh, heel, but I say, like, you're too pretty to be a heel, <laughs> and uh, you're too athletic, and, like, people love you, man, like, if you get more money as a baby face, stay a baby face, don't turn here just because you thought it'd be fun. But you know what he could do, though? What? He could show them all that talent, this is what AJ Styles did back in the day, right. so AJ Styles, Pretty boy, super athletic, right? So he showed them his athleticism and stuff, and his baby face for like six months. Then he turned heel. He refused to do any high flying moves. He wouldn't go off the top rope. He wouldn't do any kind of high flying moves. And the crowd turned on him so fast. So if your buddy could show that athleticism, and obviously he said you know, pretty boy style, but then don't give it to the people. All of a sudden, just one day, stop and get on the mic. I'm not going off the top rope anymore. Well, here's the problem with that. Is sometimes, like, if you're too good at one thing, right. it will just go over. Let's say, for example, Triple H. Triple H is a good example. Like, as a heel, he is one of the best heels in the game. But it, he is so good at being a heel no, that he they turn him baby face, you know, just because of yeah. how good he was as a uh, heel. So, uh, well, while he did make most of his money as a heel, right. like, people still, like, love so him as a DX baby. DX runs and... Exactly. Yeah. So uh, it's the same thing with me. Like at one point, I was so big of a heel that they cheered for me. One time, I had like half the audience booing me, half the audience cheering me because yeah, yeah. I was like the best heel in the building, the yes. best character in the building. That I'm over on both uh, heel and baby face. Thanos, so, man. You're Thanos of the dressing. Baby, Thanos, yeah. Thanos is the most popular character. Yeah, right? here's the thing. Like MCU, uh, what's it called Thanos. It is the baby face, but yes. the comic Thanos is the heel. Right. Because both their uh, intention is different. And like my uh, what's called intention as a heel is so good. I, I'm uh, so good at the feeling that I'm over as a baby face. I like that. So uh, what's called nowadays people like the heel. And uh, even like I had some shows where people say, man, I love hating you. I love yes. hating you. And that's yes. the thing. So, uh, at the moment, like, I should stay as a heel as long as possible, and if I do go north, yes, I have to turn baby, but while I'm in the South, I got to stay heel as long as possible, because that's my best opportunity to get more booking and more yeah, cash. because you're going to go get heat wherever you go, and you're going to be, you could be the headline heel at any show you go to in the South. Yeah. You know what? Because everybody wants someone, like they said, I love booing somebody, right? Mm. I need somebody to boo, right? This is my man right here. Every, any show you go to, that's my top heel right there. Cool. And I appreciate the fact that you understand the importance of a heel. Because so many, you know, and I don't want to bring out a lot of promotions, but like, I heard Cody Rhodes say, we don't have heels and baby faces here. That was just like, excuse me? Yes, and I feel like, mean? I know this is to Cody Rhodes, but I feel like that's the wrong way to approach business. And I know Oops. like, he uh, was going to have three generation of wrestling in, and uh, sure. he's trying to change the game, but the thing is, like, you need somebody to be behind. You need somebody to be against. Yes. And uh, there's one example. I was at a AEW Fighter Fest uh, some time ago, and uh, Hangman Adam Page. The people loved him, and it was like on my first few times I seen him having a match. And there was a one point in the match where he uh, shot a booger at a Jungle Boy. 
And I'm like, ew, this is disgusting. But people uh, cheer for him. I'm like, why would you cheer for him? That's disgusting. Imagine if he did that to you. Like, what a huge move. That was a huge move. And yes, as a tweener, like, you need to, you know, be both and both. But the thing is, like, being a, a tweener, you can't just, you know, be See, that's a cheer. That's as hell right there. Yes, <laughs> and I was like, Stone Cold is the only, like, he legitimate tweener yes. because, like, uh, what was it called? Because like, he's a cultural, cultural phenomenon. He's a cultural he's phenomenon. Bigger than, he was bigger than wrestling. Basically, That's why yeah. he can do it. So, like, he's the only one who can get away with it, but everybody else want to be between us so bad, like, they are uh, more or less, like... You're, you're nothing. Well, it's like I'm mixing, like, two ingredients together. Like, steak and pizza are good yeah, separately, but not together. together, yes. Yeah, and it's like, I'm watching the show, and I'm like, okay, these guys are having a great match. Why do I care? Mm. I spent 20 minutes of back and forth. I, there's no storyline to this match. And there's no heel, there's no baby, nobody's cheating. The ref hasn't taken it. So, okay, this is really good athleticism. But I can get that watching basketball, football, baseball, gymnastics, soccer, gymnastics. Volleyball. Awesome. Why should I care about YouTube's match? That's correct. And the thing is, like, that's the thing, like, now, like, in the old days, like, you needed a uh, talent. But, and the world's good. In the 90s, you need, like, both talent and uh, what's called charisma, but nowadays it's all uh, charisma, all flips. character, all cartoon characters. Like, yes, they, all of them can do flip or not, but, but anybody can do them, you know? And uh, what's called, there's a, what's called, in, in AEW there's like, like five, six different, like three-man staples, no, sure. and I, I can't uh, tell who's who, uh, because like there's so many of them, you know? It's like, if you have 72 seven-foot guys, you have no seven foot guys. Nobody's not, nobody cares anymore. Why do you have so much of the same stuff? Pretty much, yeah. Nobody cares anymore. Why should I care about these guys? I can go see these guys, and these guys, and these guys, and these guys. So, how do you not have any heels? <laughs> it's just, I just, I'm glad that you understand the importance of heel and babyface. Mm. Because for some reason, a lot of the indie stuff, on the indie guys, indie, indie rest, they don't get it. And, it's to me taken away from the element of the drama. You need the drama. Mm. You need the reaction from the crowd. They need to be angry. They need to be pissed off at somebody. Right. Notice that they're golf clapping everybody doing cool flips. <laughs> I know. I want them throwing stuff in water and booing you and hating you and stuff like that because you carry the show too. Every show needs a villain. Mm. If it's all good guys, it's boring, right? Right. Well, I appreciate the fact that you know that. Um, this is actually a thing I had really wanted to ask you. Have you ever had any major injuries? Uh, surprisingly, uh, no. Like, what's going on? Not going on. Like, uh, thankfully, like I haven't had any uh, major injury. Yeah. Like, the worst I got is basically like a cut here and like a little uh, blood on the lip. But otherwise, go. it's basically like cutting bruises, you know, all around. Like sore stuff. Yes, and uh, yeah, you know. Do my best, you know, protect myself and my opponent, you know, wow. that way, like, we don't need to, you know. Love hearing that. Like, the best thing about me is that I can get the crowd involved without any of us having to do anything uh, dangerous. So, Love I can that. make them cheer for you, I can make them boo for me without any of us having to take a major risk to get it, you know. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? That's crazy. That's why I love character work. Mm. I, love, I love, that's why you need to heal in the ring. Because, yes, you can get the crowd up after you do 27 backflips. You just broke your neck. Right, but let's say for example, like the first five minutes, you get the whole crowd involved just by booing at you, like, yeah. what was it called? You basically just stole the show. You're in the match, uh, you got him now. And uh, there's been many times in different promotions where I had the biggest uh, heel reaction of anybody because uh, I, I basically just do nothing and hey, they hey. boo me. Isn't and that crazy? I was at uh, Paul County, which is surrounded by heel bellies, and uh, before I walked out of the scene, as soon as they announced my name, Ali Muhammad. Boo! <laughs> the whole crowd started hating me before I walked yes. out of me. Yes. And as soon as I walked out with my chic outfit and my racket flag, the yes. boo got even louder. Yes. And you didn't do anything. I did nothing. How beautiful is that? Like, how, like, how is it like I did nothing and I get more reaction from you? You know, like you did 20 bumps, 20 finishers, but I did not know my name and I got more, more reaction. reaction than you. Mm -hmm. So you just got beat up. In front of a crowd of like 100 people, you're sore as heck. Awesome. I'm glad you put on a great gymnastics show. This man walked out here and did nothing and got more reaction to you. How does that make you feel? That's got to hurt a little bit, man. Like, but because he has character work and because he's able to get the people, it's so easy. 
It doesn't require you to get hurt. But you actually never had major injuries. You never had to jump off anything crazy. Dusty Rhodes is such a prime example. Yes. Do you see Dusty doing anything? It's, no, it's not, it's, not, it's not about that. It's about the fact that I have you by the palm of my hand, and I'm telling a narrative, and I'm pulling you into my story, and I can get you to believe my story, just by simple actions in the ring. But we lost our art form, now it's jumping off everything. And these guys are getting broken legs and on the shelf for, if you're on the shelf for a year or six months, we don't care about you anymore. Mm. So why don't you want to do the work safe and work smart and get more of a reaction? And you keep getting booked. Mm. You get booked, right? <clears throat> yes, Clearly. I'm getting uh, constant booking, you know. Thank you. Speaking of that, can you give me some of your bookings coming up? Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, the next month is going to be uh, July because June is almost over on July uh, 10th. I have ZFWE in Polk County, that's on the uh, 10th, I think I've already mentioned. And on the uh, 23rd, there's going to be local pro wrestling in Groveland. I'm sorry, on the 23rd. On the 24th is division pro wrestling in Orlando, Florida. So that's the confirmed date at the moment. I'm going to see if we can get more booking in between uh, these, two, these three promotions. This man stays booked all the time. He doesn't have to jump off anything. How about that? Um, What's been like your highest high point so far? Is it your, like your, or your uh, most fond memory with involved wrestling? Uh, <clears throat> I mentioned before that uh, I got a, a what's called a boo from one side and a chip from the other yeah. side, and uh, I wasn't even wrestling now. I was doing a promo, nice. you know. I was just talking to the audience, and I'm having them like dancing, you know. I feel like <laughs> more of a uh, rock star than a wrestler, yeah, like. You, like what's called from the movie uh, what's called Queens, you know how our uh, Freddie goes, hey yo, and the crowd just right responds to him, it. and that's basically what I'm saying. Like <laughs> all of you know that I'm here to cause mayhem, destruction. You all know by default I am better than you, and I hear cheers and boos, cheers and boos, <laughs> cheers and boos, you know. And at the same time, from both sides, I hear Ali, 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 and that was Man, like so my cool. greatest moment. And I was in uh, an audience of uh, like around 100 people, oh, and uh, I was called more and more bookings again, the more and more people I'm getting, and I'm was called. I'm trying to get the uh, reaction again. I'm trying to get like hundreds, if not thousands of people, you, you know, know, screaming my okay. name. Okay. I know you're getting you know, you know, you get it because you care. Mm. And you know how the business works. Right. And you know what to do to make the business work. Right. And uh, what was it called? Uh, uh, I mentioned that it, it's easy, but here's the thing. It's easy to get eyes on me. My, uh, what was it called? Challenge is, is, this is the challenge I set for myself, is to get a bigger reaction right. than I first initiated. Like, they, uh, what was it called? Before I walked out, like, when they hit my name, they give me this reaction above everybody else. I want to get, like, this much reaction. I want to get a much higher right. reaction. So that's the uh, world's call, uh, uh, challenge I set for myself is like, how do I uh, push the envelope more? How do I make a 11 into a 20? So that's uh, the challenge I set for myself. Good man, you know what, I, I, it's just refreshing to hear, you're 23, right? I'm 26 at the moment. 26 now, but you're, you're under the age of 30 and you have a grasp on the business still. And it seems like, you know, just listening to people who you think would have been in the business 10, 15 years, and they don't have, they lost the plot. Well, it's funny you mention that because uh, earlier I mentioned I was at a Dean Malenko seminar right. and uh, he mentioned that, uh, he said, don't listen to these people who've been into the business 20 years. Uh, what you should talk to is people like uh, Dustin Rose, you know, like Gold Dust. Because when Dusty, I'm sorry, Dustin Rose uh, first started, for the first two years of his wrestling career, he was wrestling eight times a week, yep. twice on Sunday and then every day of the week. So by the end of the two years, he has uh, close to like eight, nine hundred matches. Yep. And these twenty years red, how many matches do you think they got? Hundreds of thousands. Like, no, 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 no. No, the other guys. No, some of these twenty years red, they yep. get booked like once a month yep. or twice a month. So at the very most, they get like a hundred or two hundred matches. Yeah, yeah. So who are you going to listen? A guy who has nine hundred or a guy who has two hundred matches? Exactly. So he said, like, you should listen to the guy who has the most matches rather than who has many years, you know? And that hit everybody in the uh, world's called audience. Like, everybody, like, realized, like, he's right. You didn't really think about it that way. You just figured that they've been in business that long, they must have wrestled a whole bunch of times. And yeah, you, you meet many investors who've been in business like 15, 20 years, and uh, world's called, like, yes, they're good guys, yes, to get a reaction, but 
if the biggest uh, reaction you got is at a local bar or local school, right. and you uh, bring in like a hundred people, <laughs> like yes, like any advice you give, it's good advice. But at the end of the day, like I'm trying to be better than you, like right. you with all due respect. You know? Give me and your advice. <laughs> like there, are, there are times where I have like 15, 10 year veterans asking me for advice, like how do I get a better crowd reaction? Because I got more reaction from them in my first year than they have in their like. 12 or 15 years. So, I, I had I had a uh, veteran tell me I shouldn't give them advice. I'm saying like, they're asking me why shouldn't I give them? Cause like I've been a basically a teacher my whole life. Ever since uh, elementary school, I've been like helping kids with their homework. Like I've been teaching them like mathematics, uh, history, science, and like I even had a uh, job where I was teaching people how to get their CDL Class B, so they wow. become a bus drivers and I mean I was teaching people in their forties, fifties and sixties, so why shouldn't I like give advice to these uh vets, especially if they are the one asking me, you know? Yeah. So if, if if they feel like you have something to offer them mm -hmm. and I, I, I that's how I am too, like I don't feel like I know everything about everything. I'm gonna ask questions. You know, if I feel like somebody has some knowledge or experience to give to me, I'll happily ask them. I don't mind at all. You know, so if somebody comes to me and says, Hey, like, you know, you can do this a better way. I'm going to take the advice and run with it. Hmm. Uh, you know, I appreciate the fact that you take the business seriously, and we appreciate the fact you came in with, with us today, man. Um, if you have anything else you want to plug or promote, let us know. If not, um, I'm going to think we're going to end the interview. We're good? Uh, yes, uh, I have a uh, merchandise on Pro Wrestling Team. Just uh, type in Ali Muhammad and you'll find a I am an infidel t shirt. Ah, yes. And uh, World's Gold. You can get them at uh, any size and uh, World's Gold. They're a good price. And you should get them like in a couple of weeks and you know, just wear them at one of my shows. And uh, eventually I'll get more and more merchandise. But there's my mer merchandise and uh, you can follow me on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Just type in Ali Muhammad and you should find me. And you know, when it comes to a booking, uh, you can just either contact me. Uh, throughout the, you know, some, uh, Instagram or Facebook. We're going to have um, all his links, obviously, at the end of the interview. Um, Ali, if you want to book Ali, AliBooking20 at gmail.com. He said ProWrestlingTees.com. Make sure you guys get the I Am Infidel t-shirt. There's local shows coming up. Rock the shirts out the shows. Support this man. Support his heel. And let's get this man his money. We're out. Total chaos. Gentlemen's giving it back. Ali Muhammad, proud of this win. How could you be proud of a win like this? That's not a win. We're proud of a lot of things, I don't know.